the way that I think a lot about leadership and coaching our team is that you're basically starting with the end in mind. And I always say that if I'm going to coach you on something, right, I'm trying to put you at the highest level of professionalism, meaning everything we're going to talk about, we're going to ask you to do is in your best interest for your professional development. And if you can always make it all about them. So you're saying not just the physical equipment, but also, of course, the mental, yeah. right? Decision making, what they should be thinking about. And that's what true coaching is, right? Because if you can do that and coach them the right way from the beginning, right, and develop them, right, they're going to become amazing soldiers, amazing salespeople, amazing players. So, you know, one of the, whether you're in the military, you're on a sports field, or you're in a business, right? One of the challenges that, that we find that, that leaders face is that their, their people are obedient, right? And, and by I say what I say, when I say obedient, I mean they just do what they're told, right? And leaders tend to think that they have to have all the answers, right? When really what we should be doing is, is developing the capacity in our people. Right, giving them the tools, resourcing them to be able to handle situations without having to come to the leader to get the answer. And you know, examples in, in sports is, is you can come out of a, you know, a coach can call a play and the defense or your, your enemy has a vote, right? They can come in, they could double team the receiver. Uh, they can come out in a zone instead of playing man to man, right? And if your teams are obedient, they're just going to go run the play that the coach gave them. If your teams develop capacity, they're going to be able to handle the unknown. They're going to make the adjustment. They're going to make the decision, whether it's a sales team, right, or whether it's, uh, it's a sports team or it's a, it's a military team in action. You want to prepare your people, right, to be able and give them and empower them and resource them to be able to make decisions, to develop, and in turn develop the next level of, of leaders coming up with them, behind them. And the question we ask leaders all the time is, what is the goal of leadership? And the goal of leadership is to make the team better. So what I love about their coaching and I have, how I think it can be so impactful to a team and organization is you guys think so differently about leadership. Because if you think about what you're just getting at, that term different, is that I can remember I was coaching, I coached my son's golf team for nine years. And I took it seriously, but I played college golf. And Today in college golf, if you ever watch it, which is mind-numbing, it's a six-hour round of golf, and the coaches literally play the game for the players. Right. So my son was like 11 or 12 years old, and I just made a commitment that I could only say two things to him, great swing, great shot. That was Johnny Miller's line. So Mac, one day, as we're playing, he's like 11 or 12, and he's like, Dad, what do you think, bump and run or flop shot? I'm like, what, 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 what do you think? And he goes, no, 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 just tell me, like, what do you think? I'm like, but then when you're going to be in this situation, okay, I'm not going to be there. you got to make a decision. He goes... Can you just one time tell me what to do? So I always took that philosophy of, right, and it's all, we, we, as a family, we call it figure it out, right? We have another word in there, but, you know, figure it the blank out. And it's all about that figuring it out. So giving them the capacity to figure it out. And I think the strength of what these guys coach and what's such a difference is just how you, you, you t teach leaders to think like that. And I'm just telling you, it's not intuitive. Right, because leaders do not, like, especially insecure parents, just want to make every decision for their kid. Well, and we're so afraid of watching our children, our employees fail, fail. Because, because we think the consequences are so great. And I was very, very fortunate to have a, a, a really great commander. And it was, this was, I was going on my fifth rotation uh, to combat. And he asked me what my goals were. And I said, what I what I believed at the time, which was, I'm going to bring all my guys back. And he goes, stop. That is a stupid goal. And I was like, okay, I've been told since I was a cadet, that's what my job is. And he goes, you're, you're going to think you have everything right. You're going to make a mistake at some point in combat. And the cost and consequence of that mistake will be one of your Rangers lives. And I'm going to tell you that if your mistake is not born of negligence, meaning you should have known something or you should have read something that you didn't, it's okay. And that completely changed how I looked at mistake making. Here's this guy who, who made it to four stars and, and commanded at a very high level. Um, and he just told me that it was okay if I made a mistake, even if the cost was a, a ranger's life. 
I later understood, and there's more to the story that I understood, you know, why that was important as a, as a warrior. But it really has me look at the civilian world and, and leaders very differently. Like, if this guy could say that I could lose a life, and it, if it wasn't born in negligence, it's okay, then isn't it okay that my kid gets cut from a team every once in a while? Isn't it okay that they maybe fail a test? Isn't it okay that they blow a sale? I mean, can we really look at these things in, in context and say, okay, maybe we've, we've taken this, you know, no failure, you know, zero failure idea, and we've taken it a little too far.